Whoops. Testing. Testing one, two, three. We are getting close. Stream's coming through, right? Uh, check, check. Oh yeah, I see people joining, hello. We are getting the last bits of preparation going on here. We are almost there. Welcome, welcome. Seeing a lot of faces that I have seen before. Uh, that is uh, a very weird way to put reading text from users <laughs> in a chat room. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you heard that whole thunk. That was my door closing. Almost ready. wondering yes that is a vindicator yep this is a vindicator 100 percent gentlemen to the official rockfish game stream i am your host and your guide eric schrader the community ambassador for rockfish games also your guide through all things everspace to related oh my goodness how are you all doing on this lovely friday i hope that it's fantastic for you it's been fantastic for me this week has been rather delightful we've made a lot of internal progress as you're gonna find out a little bit about that um but uh mainly it's been like with the Drake system and its little integral features uh, that I can't so much talk about, but I do have stuff that I can actually show today. So that's exciting. New stuff to actually show and talk about. So a uh, quick rundown of what that looks like. We're gonna be covering uh, some consumable stuff and we're also gonna be talking about some of the varying updates that we've been making along the way. Um, that kind of includes some little features and tweaks like quality of life features, stuff like that, um, as well as a couple improvements um, but I think you guys will uh, like, I think you'll appreciate. So we'll just cover uh, a slew of those um, and we'll be flying around doing high risk areas, uh, you know, other things that we can do in the game, uh, take on some jobs, I don't know. We could do a lot of different things. All the while answering your questions and having conversations with you because as you guys know, this is a community focused stream. We put you first. And that's why, that, that's why these videos exist at all. It's why we do these live streams. So if any content is shown or you have any questions about the game, feel free to ask in chat. We have a number of people who are standing by to assist, to help answer anything that I might miss. Otherwise, uh, I, have a, I have a decent wealth of knowledge on the game and what's happening. So uh, I'm more than happy to help you have that understanding of your expectation, what we're providing, all that type of stuff. All that type of stuff. Mm. Big old disclaimer. So let's get right into this. Let's go ahead and load into our new game. And by new game, I mean the one that we've been playing. I changed the colors of my Vindicator because I uh, I didn't like the red, the, the red, yellow, whatever the, what are people calling it? I don't even know what you're calling it. 
So I changed it to this. It's got almost like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's got almost like a vintage feel to it, and I, I just dig it. I really like the way this one came out. So this is what we are going to be using, at least for a while, this Vindicator. Uh, we can swap around uh, some other ships. So just like last time, uh, whenever I started the streams, I realized how important it is to like cover your layout and all of your attributes and everything. So we're gonna kind of do that first before we launch. This Vindicator build is stylized in a way to kind of like keep its drones alive. Uh, so it does have a lot of firepower, of course, uh, and a bit of expertise and utility. So we're gonna be using the uh, devices in conjunction uh, with our drones. Uh, the main component to keep our drones alive is this nano transmitter. So distribution also repairs nearby allies. So when we use it, we heal up our drones while we attack. That's why we need that firepower so high to get a lot of health on that front. Uh, we're also using fusion hook uh, kunai and EMP generator shield surge because uh, I want to play a little bit more defensively. I right, screw that. I want more damage. I'm just going damage. I don't care. That's what I want. I want to damage. Um, and that might not be the best thing actually, but uh, I don't care. That's what I'm going with. We're gonna go damage. Our passives, uh, both of these that I'm kind of like over. Drones regenerate one hole per second, which I love, and 50% reduced damage from enemy drones. Uh, and then wreck interaction range is about 800 meters through my expertise being this high. Uh, last but not least, the weapons we're using, we've got this Marksman Thermogun, which I'm very, very happy with. We've got this calibrated scatter gun, which is also proved to be quite resourceful. And then we have these powerful scorpion missiles. These are Starforged powerful scorpion missiles. These things are insane. And they auto fire. We have a chance to auto fire. So as we're blasting away with our thermal gun, we have a chance uh, with our high precision. When we hit, a, we get a critical hit, there's a chance that the scorpion missile will just freely launch. Um, yeah, and it doesn't consume a missile when it does that. Then we got some pretty standard gear. I say standard in the sense of it's all level 22 um, superior stuff, providing benefits that you know you would think are pretty traditional. And we are holding on to a couple items that we may or may not swap between, just depending on what happens. We have one signal decoder. I probably could have prepped that a little bit better. Whoops, been highlighting so many other things. I didn't think about making more signal decoders, but uh, we'll go to Kite Nebula. Uh, and probably do this in a different ship because uh, that just looks like complete destruction for my drones, that explosive death modifier there, but uh, mutator. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, pretty happy with this build. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about these devices, uh, some of which you already are very familiar with, right? Like the sticky turret, the nano injector, the nanobots medium, and this one's different. This is a peacemaker. This is a peacemaker. So uh, here we're gonna crack into the consumables. That's what I'm getting at right here. So we're gonna crack into some of these new consumables that we've got. The peacemaker disables enemy weapons in a 700 meter radius around the ship for five seconds. So this could be used in a pinch when you're just uh, getting pummeled and you launch it. It affects all ships in that 700 meter radius. And the, uh, yeah, they just stop firing. It's similar to EMP. Uh, but you can use it in conjunction with using EMP. So like you can use your EMP to do damage over time. Then when that drains off, then you can use Peacemaker. So there's like effectively no cooldown. Um, but remember, consumables are consumed upon use. So there may be a time and a place for you to, to capitalize on using this bad boy, um, even against foes that are EMP immune, for example. Uh, but yeah. So let's go ahead and crack into the crafting and go to this tab, which we haven't looked at for a while. We're, I'm like, I'm diving straight in. I'm diving straight into all of this, guys. So in the crafting, we do have this consumables tab um, and the resources that you need for these, this has not been ironed out now, but I do wanna show you this because this is part of the process of us navigating the costs for a lot of different items maybe even the primaries, secondaries, modules, components, and possibly even catalysts. Uh, so here you can see that there's crafting resources in conjunction with like components. And this is going to be a theme as we go through uh, all of these. And uh, I think I think it even gets, uh, are there any straight up resources? No, there's not. But we're gonna talk about all of the, the current consumables and just a little bit, just showing this, this is work in progress, of course. 
I feel like I shouldn't say that disclaimer because you know it's early access, but still, there you go. Um, but yeah, so combination of crafting uh, components as well as, uh, or crafting ingredients and components, excuse me. So we have the straight up uh, common blueprints for your energy injector, your nanobots, and your damage limiter here. We've got uncommons, we got the damage booster, which you're familiar with. We got the nanobots medium, the sticky turret. Then we got a couple more. Now, clearly these, end these icons are not finished yet. We will have unique icons for each one of these. But let's crack into them so you can see how they are uh, as I answer one quick question, which is how are you doing anyways, Eric? I am doing lovely, I really am. I'm having a really good day. Uh, it's been a good week, a lot of really good progress. I'm behind on one territory, but let's not tell Michael, okay? Don't don't tell Michael at all that I'm behind on one little thing that I'm doing. But otherwise, everything else is coming along great. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been good. Uh, let's see, what else? What else? We're good. Let's keep going. So we got the Peacemaker we just talked about. 700 meter radius disables all ships for five seconds. Can really come in a pinch. Next, we got this Mineral Mender. So for five seconds, when you mine ore, you recover your armor by 10%. Every time you, you mine ore, you repair your armor by 10%. So if you do this within with conjunction with like a flat cannon, it will actually work like with all of the uh, obtained ores, like every single one and it stacks. So you can repair a lot of your armor. Just, it's very helpful to use, especially if you're like in the middle of nowhere, you don't really have a solution to get out uh, and there's maybe like opponents nearby, um, you know, having one of these and there's some ore nearby, it can really come in a pinch. Next, we have a system recovery routine. I think you guys got a sneak peek of this one last week. Uh, this one removes most debuffs and resets any debuff buildups. So um, debuff buildups, that's that's an interesting, that's that's interesting because that, that doesn't exist in the game at all whatsoever. Uh, but uh, these debuffs, you know, it's, you know, you get, you get EMP'd, you know, you get corroded, you get, uh, you know, whatever. You just pop this system recovery routine and it just wipes them off of you. Really nice, really nice. Next up, we've got the rare tab. We got nanobots that are large, the nanobot injector, of course. Then we've got two more, the nano repair kit. This repairs a random damaged equipment item. Again, another thing that can seriously come in a pinch. Next, we've got a cloak field generator. A cloak field generator renders the ship invisible to enemies for 15 seconds. Shooting may alert them to your position. It's effectively your cloaking device. However, it's a consumable. So every time you want to use it, you've got to make a new one. Could get costly, or if you balance out your resources correctly, you could have cloaking on any ship of your choosing. Honestly, there's probably going to be more benefits to using cloaking on uh, the Scout than any other one, but still uh, pretty neat, pretty, pretty nice. Last but not least, we got the superior tab to cover the remaining consumables. We got the device charger this is my all-time favorite one. This is, uh, this is amazing. It is also insanely expensive, even right now. And again, this is not done, so it will probably change. Uh, specifically, we need to have you know some superior stuff down here. But uh, regardless, the device charger instantly resets all device cooldowns, instantly. So that means you pop like you know you're in a. You're in a tier four plus ship and you've got all four devices installed and you're in a late game, you're level 30 and you're like finished the campaign and like you're doing this uh, ancient rift, right? And you're in the middle of this battle, you pop all four devices, you pop your device charger, you pop all four devices again and you have this stacking effect, this absurd stacking effect going on, which I want to put emphasis on does stack. It, you get some serious value uh, with the right devices in tandem with this device charger. Fantastic, but again, it's gonna cost you. And last but not least, we've got this energy shield. Deploys a shield that lasts for eight seconds and absorbs damage equivalent to 30% of your maximum whole hit points. Straight up absorbs 30% of whatever your maximum whole hit points are. So could be more valuable the larger your ship is, of course, 
but uh, still, when you're a smaller vessel, any damage recovered or blocked in this case is, uh, is wonderful, it's fantastic. So another very valuable item and probably will become even more valuable depending on what build you're utilizing, specifically if you're going for a beefier ship, uh, just to maximize that value of 30%. So that's, uh, that's what's going on. And again, I wanna put a, a bit more emphasis on what's happening down here below. So while of course I went through and I covered all of these different uh, consumables that are entering the picture and you know their pictures are pending, it's also seriously important to note that these crafting ingredients down here, this is not just a representation of, of what the consumables look like, but this could also be how we reapproach crafting all the other tools in the game. All the other tools in the game. Your primaries, your secondaries, your modules, even possibly your components. That This one might not get changed, but... Um, but your primaries or secondaries or modules, there might be a couple of tweaks to how these are crafted um, because we want you to, you know, put a lot of emphasis in getting this stuff without relying on too much RNG. Cause like right now, this stuff, you're just scrapping stuff in your, in your inventory. You're just finding junk and you're scrapping it. We also want there to be that added effect of, oh, hey, I need this particular component which means I need these specific resources. So there's validity and go into your map, go into your resource uh, uh, scanner, right? And you say, dang, I really need that pure titanium or whatever. You look around to find it and you say, okay, I'm, I'm heading to Union, right? We, we've got a, we got a plan of attack. Now you can get there, you can get the ingredients you need and you can stack up without just relying on luck to get a superior item that has those parts that you need. So, uh, there you go. That's a big chunk. We nailed it. Fif only 15 minutes in, and we've already covered everything that you need to know about uh, consumables and their crafting. Boom, there we go. All right, that's a wrap. Uh, GG, everybody. <laughs> but sincerely, I hope that this shows you like that intentionality we have moving forward. So do expect changes on that front. Um, and we do consider those to be quality of life changes in regards to how you are approaching the game space. All right, so now we need to head to the Kait Nebula with our little Vindicator here. I love it. I love my little drones. Hello, drones. And we're gonna get, get there on the fly. Now I think this was, yes, this was adjusted. So, this was also just a very small quality of life change that Hans Christian uh, fixed. But in your guys' current build, if you zoom all the way out, um, this vanishes. You can't actually see the spatial bypass. <laughs> so he fixed it. Uh, so when you zoom all the way out, you can actually see it. <laughs> Super simple. Oh, Spoot Knight, I see your question. Uh, and then be destroyed in the process. So it turns the ore into healing and isn't isn't uh, taken as a resource. Uh, I am, let's find out. Let's find out together. Let's find out together. Let's get this mineral mender. Where are you at? Right here. Let's make one. Oh, it crafted, it crafted three. I think there's a bug there. Uh, it's supposed to be when you craft, you get to just one. Senses. You'll get used to it, Hive. But I'm pretty sure the way that this works, we're just gonna wait for this to, we're just gonna wait for this to complete. It's got 10 seconds for its cooldown. You can see right there. Once it's done, we're gonna pop it. And even though we don't have any armor to get, we're gonna see if it destroys. Actually, we do need to get some armor damage, don't we? We're gonna have to do that first. All right, let's go get some damage. Please hit me. Uh, my drones are, oh, I'm gonna need to lose all my drones first. I think my drones are healing my armor for me. Oh boy. 
Build's too good. Can't test properly. There's not enough enemies in this area. Maybe we should just go to the high risk area. That should do the trick, right? That's a little bit. Well, this this should be fine, right? This should be fine. So we're gonna put our shield back on. So we're gonna use the mineral mender. It's going right now. And then we're going to fire. Yeah, so it restores and it collects the resources for you. I thought it did, but I just wanted to double check. Yeah, so um, the wording here, it's mainly just talking about how the um, the consumables destroyed in the process, which I guess is a little bit redundant because you guys know that the consumables will be destroyed in the process, but still, some of these descriptions are still being uh, updated as well, so that one probably will be fixed. Uh, I digress. There you go. So let's get ourselves an Ancient Warden. Also want to do this for this particular battle because we don't want to scare him away. I'm going to heal our drones up just like so. Nice and simple. Now, I did talk about this last time, but there have been uh, a few modifications to certain enemies. The Ancient Warden did receive a bit of an AI update, so its targeting is a lot better. Its movement is a little bit uh, wonkier. It's a little bit harder to hit. Unless you're using, you know, a thermo gun. <clears throat> and uh, there was something else changed about him, but uh, oh my gosh, we're going to die. There we go. Easy peasy, right? Cool. All right, so now we're gonna activate this. Uh, it's probably not gonna look so great for our drones, but screw it, we're gonna try it anyway. Uh, but first, let's try and get our armor back. And I've got the perfect tool for that. Oh my goodness. How about that? I'm gonna change my weaponry though to make it just a little bit easier to mine. Or wait, even even easier. The mining laser to mine. Let's do that. Now hold up. Why didn't you give me my armor back? Is that a bug? That's a bug! Well, just pretend that my armor came back. That's how that consumable works. 100% no problems at all in this work in progress early access experience that we're showing you new consumables for the first time. Excellent. All right. Anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and go back to our thermal gun since we're going to be fighting some redeemers. It's just going to be a little bit easier. 100% real, no fake. Exactly. Oh, goodness. Any news on the fix of the planet surface skybox bug on AMD GPUs? Uh, we have not heard from, we have not heard from them, so no. We have not uh, heard any fixes on that front. Nope. But yeah, when there's an update, if there's an update, hopefully it's a win. Yeah, we'll make sure that uh, we get that going and it's all translated perfectly. Difference between sustained and efficient prefixes, do they both just reduce energy usage? Uh, no, sustained, actually let's let's look at the descriptions because that's gonna help us out the most. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, do, 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 do. Are they not, are they not listed here? They're not listed here? I could have sworn that we had the Catalyst Craftables for at least sustain. I guess uh, that was changed out. Maybe it was changed to eco? No. That's weird. 
But regardless, um, sustained, I believe, increases the um, energy capacity, I believe. Um, let me just look this up so I know ex like directly. So one second, I'm just gonna pull up my cheat sheet so I can answer this question. Uh, that's a, a great uh, a great question though uh, so sustained is increased energy capacity yes and then the other one you wanted to compare it to, shoot, where was, what was the one that we were comparing it to? Efficient. Uh, reduces the energy cost. Okay, so there it is. So sustained increases the energy capacity. Efficient reduces the energy cost. I can understand how some people view those as sort of the same thing. Uh, but in short, they're two very different things. Energy capacity, energy consumption, right? Um, and this is important for certain equipment that you find as you're progressing, especially tied to the energy core and its particular output for your weaponry. If you have weapons that have a ton of energy capacity, but have a very small amount of consumption, um, actually like this, actually like both of our weapons, they're both pretty good on that front, um, which is surprising for a thermogun. But regardless, the because the energy consumption is is somewhat low uh, compared to the energy capacity, we can fire it for a pretty long time, right? So like this can just, we can keep firing for a pretty considerable amount of time. As you reduce that um, consumption, that means you can fire longer. If you have a greater energy capacity, that means even if you're burning through your energy consumption faster, uh, the larger energy pool means that based on your regeneration, you can store more uh, and there's going to be benefits on that front as well. So kind of translates to firing longer on both fronts. Um, I do feel that reducing the consumption is ultimately better because energy cores output is particular on how much energy per second you're getting back. So if you are more efficient with a smaller energy pool, you're going to restore that energy pool faster and still be efficient. Whereas if you have a larger energy pool, but you are still consuming large amounts of energy, uh, then you're still gonna take a longer time to refuel that added energy boon that you have to it. So there you go. Similar but different. Hope that helps. Woo! All right, let's, uh, let's get around these evasive exploding strength and death foes. This, this, is, gonna be, this is gonna be nasty. I'm certain of it. Yeah, our drones are already getting punished for this. Not surprised whatsoever. Drones don't get too close! Ugh. Ouch. Okay. I knew this was gonna happen with these redeemers. They're so slippery. Give me that energy back. Ouch. Man, that splash damage is actually a lot. This is a dangerous play. Ouch. Look at that damage. So something else to talk about that's an up and coming change. I just realized this music. All right, um, so one thing that we have noted, we want to be kind of mindful about with consumables and their usage, especially when you're in combat. Um, it's not implemented in this current build, but there's been discussions internally. And I feel like the play that we are gonna move forward with is that crafting when you're in combat is completely disabled. I'm gonna say that one more time for anybody who just missed that. When you are in combat, meaning I think it's that, I think it's the way that we distinguish combat is like if you were hit in the last 30 seconds and at a certain range of enemies or something like that. When you are in combat, crafting is completely disabled. So 
If you are going to engage yourself in combat, you need to prepare yourself first for what that experience is gonna be like. You can't just get into the thick of it and be like, oh, well, I wanna completely swap all my weapons around right in the middle of this, or I wanna, you know, create a slew of consumables and do all this type of stuff. I mean, there's already ramifications for installing something in the midst of hot swapping. However, on top of that, again, crafting is completely gonna be disabled when you are in combat. So you have to prepare before you engage. Hopefully that makes sense to all of you guys. But uh, that is what's gonna be happening. Let's get this Crusader. Oh, it's gonna be big damage again. Ouch, man. This explosive death, is a bit more painful than I thought it was gonna be. Gotta really get some distance. Also, there's a ton of elites in here too. My goodness. I like using Thermogun on the uh, Vindicator because it allows me to put a little bit more focus on the drones. So like, as you can see, I can just like target lock some debris nearby. I can keep shooting at an opponent and just go get it. It's kind of nice. Oh, that shield is in the wrong spot. Speaking of drones, I uh, basically don't have any left. Minor problems. Is there any uh, wreckage nearby? Ah, oh, yes. Maybe we can find some debris over here. Debris, please? Ah, yeah, that's what I like to see. And this is consistent through the entire game. You Vindicator players, if you're ever losing drones, you're like, crap, I need to scrap some more stuff. Find a debris field. You will likely find wreckage naturally generates there and it is in your current build right now that is something that is a feature already in place see look there's more over there just in case things go south and by the looks of it things are going to go south <laughs> oh missed almost my death. Surprised I'm actually not dead, to be honest. Our weapons damaged? Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh, you know what we need? You know what we need? Let's hope it works. Let's, let's hope it works. <laughs> Granted, you wouldn't be able to do this in the future because you're not supposed to be able to craft in the middle of combat. <laughs> oh gosh. We just activated our shield. Oh, we are totally dead. Oh, goodness gravy. Let's just, uh, let's just get some distance and uh, hope to repair some stuff up. Yep, good, excellent. That's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Oh my gosh, these guys, they're so precise. Oh, we are to we're dead. We're totally dead. I might uh, end up swapping my EMP field to uh, regenerate shields again. I think that might be our best bet on that front. Uh, but explosive enemies, let me tell you what, they can be, uh, they can kind of be nasty. They can kind of be nasty. So we're gonna try that again. Uh, we're gonna put the Peacemaker on here. Now, technically, like, right here, since we're not engaged yet, I think you would be able to do this. Um, I did just have a conversation with Hans Christian, though, about how we, at least I feel, maybe you guys can speak on this, 
maybe you can vouch for me or disagree. I don't care. Um, but like, when you go into a high risk area, I feel like straight up, no matter what, you just shouldn't be allowed to craft. That's how I feel about it. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what we end up implementing. Uh, but regardless, we are going to do a little bit of extra crafting right now on the consumable front. Uh, we want to be able to uh, nano repair. And we want, uh, let's see, what else do we want? An energy shield's probably going to be good here, too. So we're just going to pull out all the tricks. I'm going to do a little bit of that. Sticky turrets are nice, but, uh, you know, we should also probably just make straight-up nanobots, too. Probably. Excellent. All right. Oh, hello. You're awfully close. You know, I said I was going to change my device, and uh, then I didn't do it. How dare I? We need to get that fixed. Once that EMP is off cooldown, we are changing it. Oh, you're so slow. How do people like this ship? I'm just kidding. I love this ship. It's great. Having your own little drones is wonderful. All right. Somebody out there just got triggered. <laughs> This is my baby! How could you talk to that ship like that? Okay. Uh, we are changing this to shield surge because when our shields go down, we want to swap the battle to be in our favor and we want our shields back. Also prefer to hit our targets. My goodness. You know, let's just let the corrosion do its work here. Okay, let's get our shields back. There we go. Now we're on the offensive for a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a, a bit nicer. We do need to get our drones back, however. Where's that debris field? There was a debris field here, right? Ah, there it is. The other side. Nothing? RNG got me this time. All right. Anything else? All right. I see how it is. I see how it is. Oh. Yes? <laughs> no. All right. This is fine. <laughs> wow. I feel like I feel like I got a bit savage there. we go one more down oh man that's gonna be a bet until we have this boss meter filled sometimes that's just the way it is shields back perfect that feels really good i'm gonna gather Now, one of the things about exploding enemies that is kind of nice, it's actually, um, I know it doesn't show in color, like if we were to look on the map, uh, it shows it's in red, which means it's a negative, but you can use explosive death to your benefit too, because if your enemies are all bunched up, like especially like a bunch of little drones, and maybe if they weren't redeemers healing upon death, um, you can actually have them chain kill uh, other opponents. But also, you have to, of course, be mindful with that because they can chain kill you if a bunch of them explode all at once. This may actually have been how we got got uh, just a moment ago when we were addressing this exact same uh, high-risk area in the stream. Yeah, look at those look at those shields just deplete. Oof. Poor drones. Oh, 
that did not give me a lot of shields. They were not close enough. Oh, that's problems. Wow. I feel like that uh, shield didn't help at all. Oof. Vindicators really need their drones. Oh, man. Well, this is gonna be a painful one shot. We might go swap ships. Whew. Now we are uh, we are playing on a very hard difficulty. The, you know, sort of a, a standard makes things more challenging uh, thing. That will be modified in the future. But uh, man, that's pretty, this is pretty savage right now. Uh, explosive enemies and Vindicators, not a good mix. Not a good mix. But yeah. I feel like Railgun and EMP Shield Break would work for this. Yeah, actually, Seth, uh, that would be a fantastic combination. I think a Railgun would be uh, quite ideal. Um, so a Scout could be having a lot of fun in an environment where enemies explode. In fact, what do you say we go try that? We wanna try that? I wanna try that. Uh, so let's load up uh, from the base, go to a scout, and then uh, approach this exact same high risk area, but with a scout instead. Yeah. When the going gets tough, air goes ship swapping. You know it. Oh yeah. I mean, think of each ship as its own like class in an RPG. Sometimes the mage is gonna be super fantastic at, you know, uh, some sort of combats. The wizard or the, the warrior is gonna be far better at others. The rogue's gonna have a nice blend of all these other things. Um, and yeah, for right now, our, our little um, our little drone boy, not quite cutting it against this particular set of mutators. Uh, so let's see if we have a scout. I don't think we do. No, we don't. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll take our Vindicator over to Nefty's Plains. We'll see if there's a scout over there. If they do, awesome. Uh, maybe we'll accidentally show uh, new ship parts in the process. One can hope, right? <laughs> but yeah, so as you can see, like, there's a slew of new consumables that have been showcased. Um, and uh, they might not be working yet. Some of them are supposed to be, uh, but regardless, uh, these new tools should give you a couple new opportunities when it comes to your varying uh, events that are taking place. What do I think about your ghost ship theory? Uh, I need context, namely the theory. I don't know. Oh yes, I need to put my sunglasses on. That uh, that actually gives me uh, plus 40 evasion. That's very true. All right, let's go ahead and say, oh yeah, there we go. There's a beautiful spirit. I wonder if we can get a tier two plus though. We're gonna go ahead and cycle through these. I have not looked at this. So guys, I do wanna give you a heads up. This is work in progress. You may in fact see you, you may in fact see some ships that uh, have some blockouts to them that are simply not done, okay? Um, but just know that, okay? So if there's something that you see that you haven't seen before, uh, you know, you're welcome, but also it's not done. So do expect some changes. So we got a Liberator. These wings are absolutely not done. Let's see, we got a Striker, excellent, a uh, Typhoon, a Cyclops. Those wings are actually the tier twos. Uh, Nemesis, ooh. It looks cool, though. Should we take it because it looks cool? Uh, a Tormentor and a Wasp. Those wings are also not done. Cyclops, Harbinger, a Hawk, 
Another Cyclops with wings that aren't done. All right, so we only have one spirit. It's just a tier two. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go over to Prescott Starbase as well. Oh my goodness. We're flying all over the place. I wanna see if we can get a scout. Um, but this is a perfect opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, some of the changes we would like to do for the ship dealers as well. Because as you can see, like as I'm going through this process alone of trying to find the right ship, it can sometimes be a little tedious, frustrating, annoying, whatever you want to call it. And we recognize that. We want to adjust that. So in the future, our plans are to have um, certain ship dealers potentially sell certain ships. That could be a thing. Um, also, a couple other unique benefits that I probably shouldn't talk about yet, but would help you get to the ships that you desire, so that if you're looking for something, you can go to a place and uh, most assuredly find it. There's something we want to do, just a little bit of quality of life improvements on that front for ships. Because, you know, it's a little bit of a process, especially since right now, what, there's, there's three ship dealers? That's it. So yeah, it can be a little, it can be a little frustrating. You cycle between the three ship dealers and like none of them are selling what you're looking for and you're like, well, dang it, it sucks. Add more ship dealers, uh, that's also in the plan, yeah. So the initial plan, um, can I share this? I can share this. That's what I call travel made easy. Um, the initial plan was to have one ship dealer at least and every single system. And Union, of course, has two, because it should be, you know, it's it's one of the, it's the largest system, I believe, as of right now. So it's got a lot of your opportunities there. But uh, regardless, uh, that may or may not happen in the future. We'll see. Now, I'm specifically looking for a tier uh, two plus. This is a little too high of a tier. I can't quite show this off yet. Even though this is a this is also a blockout, so those are not those are not done wings. I warned you, it was gonna happen. Another spirit, another spirit tier three. Oh, those those wings are actually looking pretty great. Okay, um, yes, 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 yes. Wonderful. I thought you were here. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and uh, we have to sell our vindicator. Wait, we're almost there. We're like 4K away. Let's do a job. Let's go get some money. Let's sell stuff. We could ironically sell the signal decoder that we don't like to buy the ship to go against this signal decoder, or to go against the high risk area that we no longer have access to. Uh, hmm. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Uh, maybe let's just go hunt some outlaws for a little bit, but uh, I really, really want that scout. I really want this spirit. And uh, also, so you're aware, the uh, ship viewing page is not done either. There's more coming on that front, too. All right, so let's poke some of these outlaw scouts. Let's see what they give us. Maybe we can sell something. Shouldn't take too long to accrue 4K. I don't think. Do an unknown signal? Actually, that's a really good point. Yeah, nanobots larger, nothing. We'll take out this elite. Maybe we'll get a signal decoder. Look at that! Credits, union signal uh, decoder. We just need 2K more credits. We are almost there already. We got another elite, I want it. Let's go. Those Jaegers should probably be enough to go buy our scouts. So without further ado, let's just go pick it up. I'm kind of liking the ability to just show you guys how this is working by just accomplishing tasks here. So you can see like, you know, the reality of the space of grinding, it's only as hard as you make it. 
honestly. It's only as hard as you make it, yeah. So that's definitely gonna be enough. So now we can purchase our, we are 200 credits short. This is silly. All right, we're gonna just sell the Union Signal Decoder. And then we're gonna buy our ship. Oh my gosh. Uh, so we need to, uh, we're gonna buy and transfer our current one to the home base. So our Vindicator's going back home, but whenever you do that, it strips all the gear from that ship you are currently flying and applies it to your new ship. So just like this, boom. Our inventory has been properly transferred over. Uh, now we're gonna need a rail gun. Uh, maybe we can just craft one instead of buy one. Cause that would be way easier, I think. Look at us go, all right. Actually, I like that. The chance to deal corrosion is gonna be good on this front. So we'll take that. We'll plop that on. I feel like we should probably use, we're gonna use the Synchro Pulse as a, as a backup. So we have the Royal Gun and the Synchro Pulse. Uh, what's our passive, goodness? Can't be detected by mines during Shadow Strike. Eh, okay. 25% reduced enemy de uh, detection range. I I do enjoy that. Okay. Uh, let's also get another missile. Oh, that's the wrong button. Whoops, that's my cheats. <laughs> uh, let's get uh, a secondary weapon that we need. I'm gonna go with some destabilizer missiles so we can maximize that delicious damage. Let's try again. Let's try again. I like this one a lot. We will go with that. All right. How long does it take for the ship dealer pool to refresh? It's a great question. I'm trying to remember uh, what the very specific number of minutes was of in-game time that has to pass. I think I asked Han Christian, uh, Hans Christian this one time, he told me. Um, I think it's going to be adjusted is what it's gonna be, uh, but I think right now it's somewhere around 60 minutes. Like it, it takes a while, it takes a while. I'm gonna find this. Uh, Cause I think this is a good one to know right now. Okay, so I was kind of wrong. So this is what happens. So um, the current values, one ship after seven minutes will cycle, half of the ships after 14 minutes, 75% of the ships after 28 minutes, and all of the ships after 56 minutes. So I was uh, sort of close. So all of them do cycle over in about an hour, you know, the 60 minutes mark. But yeah, one ship will transfer after seven minutes. Now, uh, sometimes that can be in insanely annoying because you're like, you got your eye on a certain ship. You're like, oh man, I totally want this ship. And then you fly out. 10 minutes later, you come back, I'm going to buy it. And it's the one that cycled. And you want to punch someone at Rockfish Games. Who designed this? Who in their right mind would go this direction? That's nonsensical. You're destroying my immersion and uh, desire to participate, whatever. I don't know. What's your excuse? Um, we don't want that to happen either. We don't, we don't want that to happen either. So um, hopefully you're picking up from that front that there's probably going to be a unique change in the future to where if you like a particular ship, that there may or may not be a way uh, to do something about that. I didn't say a word, Andy. <laughs> uh, you know, just, uh, I just just wanted to toss that out there, you know? Just pointing it out. All right. Let's take our little scout. Oh, I like this. I like this guy. 
Oh. Oh. Oh, gosh. I know that we've heard this one before. Oh, hang on a second. Let's just, let's listen to that beautiful, oh my goodness. Are you ready for this? Let's listen to that. Oh yeah, that, that is satisfying. All right, okay, all right. Anyway. So now, let's go punch some faces in the Cayenne Nebula, yeah? I uh, also check a couple other things. Expertise. We're actually gonna dump our resistance and we're gonna go to precision as much as we can. Um, this is not gonna be as beneficial as other tools in our repertoire. So we want to do, I think we wanna do corrosion injector, man. We could go magnetic repulsor to keep foes at range. Actually, I kind of like that idea. So what we're gonna do is we're going to reset this. Oh, we need memory recalibrators. Hang on a second. Look at us doing all these things that were not uh, possible to do before for like a really long time. One, two, three, four. Tease, I thought we were gonna have it to where when you select it, you can select multiples if you want. Uh, regardless, all right. Um, all right, so we are going to remove the benefits of the corrosion injector. Reset like so. Then we are going to swap in uh, the magnetic repulsor and we're gonna upgrade this all the way. All right, excellent. And I think pushing targets to drop energy orbs is gonna be our best bet on this front. That way, when they are getting too close, we push them away. We pick up the energy and zip out of there. Uh, also, I'm not sure about kunai. We don't want to pull people in, so we're going to add uh, additional range because, you know, we're this is a ranged build, right? So additional range. Um, this is going to be kind of our get out of jail free card, so we're going to keep that on restoring shields. So we'll pop that and then just boost out of there. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this setup. I think this is a pretty good setup. We got this Peacemaker and not, not too keen about this. Damage booster for the maximum uh, absurdities. We'll have to keep that. I think this is this will be okay. This will be okay for now. Lots of adjustments, as you can see. Just, uh, just a tweak and modify. I, I wanna do some crazy damage here. But I think this will end up working. Uh, now, guys, I am going to have to take a break here in just a moment. Uh, so we'll have, we'll, we'll try this uh, one time with our build. We'll see how things go against this particular uh, high-risk area as the scout with a ranged build. Hopefully take out all these exploders. <clears throat> but yeah, then we'll take a quick break. Haven't been happier to be a railgun main. What a way to save time. Yeah, I know railgun sound effects. I think Gero's done a, a pretty impressive job. And I there there are a few more sound effects that are in fact in the game. I just don't have I don't have a list. Uh, it hasn't been a priority to gather. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, it just has not been a priority. Um, there's been so many other moving parts. Oh my gosh! But I think that you guys are gonna are gonna really love uh, what Drake has to offer. All right, so we're gonna do one attempt. Then we're gonna go on a quick break. A DMZ wide ship dealer bulletin board in regards to like being able to find your ships and stuff. Dude, uh, I love that. I love that idea. It sounds uh, kind of more for like a simulation-based game, uh, but maybe there's something there that our team can recognize and be like, hey, you know what? Maybe there's something there we can do. So that's fun. Uh, any new tracks by Dr. Gayra that I can share? Nope, not at this time. Not at this time. No, I cannot. Nope. 
All right, let's, uh, let, oh my gosh, they're already this close? What in the world? Hang on a second. Missed. He's getting too close. We're not close enough. Come in. Come on, I increased your range. There we go. All right. There we go. Nice, nice, wonderful distance from our foes. Now we just, you know, have to hit our target. Man, they're so fast! Give me that sweet energy! Thanks, Hive. Yeah, this is actually, this'll work! This'll work! This is a pretty satisfying build. Actually, wait, let's, uh, wait, the missile missed? Get back over there, boy. What are you doing? Ah, we'll just do that, all right. Be using a controller because that has a little bit more auto aim. Oh man, his shields came back. That's mean. No, no, drop the shields. All right, hang on a second. Man, redeemers in their shields. Oof. I mean, the good news is, is that I'm incredibly evasive, so they're like, they're not getting a lot of shots on me. This is gonna take a little bit of time though. This is gonna take a little time and I have to use the restroom. <laughs> oh boy. Did we plan this out accordingly? I don't know. Before he explodes, just get some distance. Good, good. Looks like I've got company. Where are my energy orbs at? Man, I don't know about you guys, but like flying the sky right now, I'm I'm getting some Aerospace One vibes, honestly. This feels pretty good. Oh my gosh. That was painful. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh gosh, we gotta get out of here. Ah, get rid of your shield. Good. Shields are down. Nice. Oh. That's what we like to see. Too many. Need shields. Good, good. Yeah, it's coming together. All right, all right. Would help if my aim was a little bit better.
Oh, come on! Need that shadow strike hasn't even been fully charged yet. All right, let's see if we can maybe get it. Oh, there it, there it is. Asking you shall receive. All right, where's a where's a tricky one? Come on! A little unfortunate, but it was a nice reprieve from all that combat. That's for sure. Gets our shield backs. Good, good. Yeah, this is absolutely going better than our attempt with the, um, with our poor little Vindicator. The drones just didn't really stand a chance from all the exploding foes. Now I say that and I really gotta keep my distance. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna have a really short trip into this. Yep. Hold still. Much better. Right. Okay. It also doesn't help that each one of these guys keeps getting buffed up every time I get a kill. Uh, that's another one of the mutators, the strength and death. There we go. Ah! No! Hope so! chasing them down oh my gosh you can tell that my general play style is getting up close and personal like i'm supposed to be hanging out at like this full-blown range and every time i'm just like ah i just want to i just want to get all up close and blast them oh, these guys are too far and their shields keep coming back too that doesn't help All right. Goodness gravy. Maybe what I need to do is swap to an Annihilator virus. Yeah, this would be much better. Uh, unfortunately, that does mean we need to pull more of our stuff from uh, something else. Actually, Energize Boost? No, we'll die from the explosion, so that would be terrible. Uh, good thing that we haven't done this yet, otherwise this, this stream would be uh, pretty uh, interesting, huh? Let's see, where's my... Uh... What's it called that I need? Memory Recalibrator, that's it. Let's get four more. <laughs> Man, imagine being prepared for the combat sequence that you're about to go into, right? Uh, let's see, let's take it off of... I really wanna keep it on the fusion hook, so we'll take it out from... Let's do the nanotransmitter. We'll take it off this. 
And that way we can boost the Annihilator virus as far forward as possible. And we're just going to try and maximize damage on this as much as we possibly can. Oh, yeah. That seems to be a heck of a lot more. And you know what? This is also a really good time to mention. We actually nerfed... Uh, <laughs> we actually nerfed the Annihilator virus. Um, not even joking. That was one of our device changes recently. And I don't think this is live yet. This is something that we are doing internally. We're testing it. We feel the Annihilator virus is actually just really stinking good. It looks like we're probably, again, it is so powerful, guys. I mean, look at that. Two uses of it, and we've cleared, we've cleared the conditions for the boss to spawn. Now, granted, we, we do have a bit in utility, all right? There, we have a bit going on there, which is maximizing that front, but still. It's a second nerf? Uh, yeah, like, I, there's been a couple of of uh, devices that have received several nerfs through the course of the lifespan of Space 2. Goodness gravy, I love that sound so much. Let's try and get a little bit of a combination thing going on here. I know I need to be at more range. I know somebody's probably thinking it. We'll kind of do this to stay at a decent range. I don't, he hasn't fired at us yet. Easy win. Oh yeah, the infection limit was added because that was just, yeah, that one was way too powerful. Yeah, we did have to change that, that's for sure. All right, we completed it. A little bit cheesier than I uh, had imagined it to be, but you know what, we'll take it. A win's a win, right? Now, seriously though, keep in mind uh, that whenever we are, you know, evaluating the nature of the game space and where we want to move forward with it, you know, we are, we're creating these tools that give you more flexibility for preparedness and also some that allow you to like, change up your formula a little bit more on the fly. So like our armor here, for example, we can swap plating. We still have the same val like a percentage of armor, but we have new benefits based on what we're utilizing, right? So little things like that. We want there to be a convenience factor for being in the fray, but we also want there to be incentives for preparing before you engage. And so even though I was absolutely crafting in the middle of that combat and uh, like, it helped me out on that front. That is not the way that it's really intended to do. I did that mainly because I didn't want to die again during the live stream. <clears throat> um, but uh, in short, there will be a lock that doesn't allow you to do any sort of crafting whatsoever once you enter combat. Now, that doesn't mean you can't craft a bunch of different consumables and then during the middle of combat, you hot swap them in. Just remember you have that 20 second timer, right? So you'll still have ramifications for it on some level, but you could have a, a large amount of preparedness within a decent sized cargo. Cargo space is actually relevant here. It is actually relevant here. So just keep that in mind. Now, I have to go use the bathroom. <laughs> so um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a quick break. Oh, I need to leave here to save. It's gravy, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's nuts okay uh let's go back to uh the ancients no 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 not the ancients it'll free bio plant get our jam tunes on
Have you ever added, uh, uh, considered adding a simple UI button to the ship dealers that refreshes their inventory of ships? Yeah, we have considered that. Yeah, no, we have a solution for ship dealer stuff. You guys don't need to come up with ideas and be like, oh, have you considered this? Have you considered that? No, we got it. We, we, we it's, it's just gotta be implemented. It's just gotta be implemented. I'm gonna go park at the Bree bio plant because I feel like it's appropriate for having to use the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, my humor is dumb sometimes. Anyway. <clears throat> All right, guys. <laughs> Goodness gravy, I'm gonna save. <laughs> and uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna kill the game so we can go to the wait screen uh, and I'll load it back up when I'm back. So uh, like five minutes, uh, if that. I'll, I'll see you guys in just a moment, woo! I was rather fast. I guess you could say that I'm eager to be back. Uh, guys, there, I got a secret. I got a secret. I hope you're all back. for that quick little intermission. Hope uh, hope you're all well and fine and dandy. We're gonna just pull up our game right back up. Excellent. Ooh, ooh, feels good. <clears throat> Another time? Uh, yeah, sure, we could, we could talk about like the crafting some more, uh, about the consumables and stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, we covered a number of things already earlier in the stream. Um, we can, we can kind of review some of it. <clears throat> so we have the, uh, you know, all the craftables are now, um, you know, plugged in here. And that we've got the, we've got some of these details. <laughs> no, the trailer again. No, <laughs> come on. The, the joke was that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. I'll show the trailer again in a little bit oh my goodness but i hope you guys are excited i mean we've we've been very hard at work you could probably tell from even that short snippet of an experience that was a mere 29 seconds that you just experienced uh at how hard at work we are on some new stuff that you will be engaged with um, and just like i said in the discord some of the content is rather chilling ah because puns are fun so uh yeah yeah, absolutely. So don't worry. We will we will absolutely uh, dive into the trailer uh, at least one more time, probably a couple, because I love you guys. That's just that's just what I do. Um, but there are a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about uh, as well. So uh, one of those things. Uh, do, 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 do.
So, okay, so balancing on device fronts, we had uh, a number of uh, little tweaks that we made across the board. Uh, some of these, I believe, are implemented and some might not be. Um, so we'll just, I'll just point to them and talk about them. So for the uh, quantum tether, oh no, that's the alt, isn't it? Or are we talking about the quantum entangler? Uh, the duration was reduced. Okay, so I think that is this. I think that is correct on this one. Uh, the duration of this was reduced. Any damage done to the user will also be applied to the target. Um, I believe it was originally 20 seconds. I, I say that and I'm looking straight at it. It was originally 20 seconds. It was reduced to 16. Uh, you can't quite see it because I haven't leveled it all the way up. It's 14 at default. And then when you level it up, I believe it gets to 16 seconds now. Um, we ended up buffing, uh, I think actually we've shown this, uh, but the Prime Zapper and the Equalizer were more separated coil guns now. Uh, so uh, they're more distinct from one another. They're not super similar, like they were. They were so similar except for like some very minor numbers uh, and we decided to change that. So they're more unique from one another. Uh, then we also increased the corrosion injector uh, damage. So that's the single target strike, uh, the damage has gone up. And this is probably what I actually should have used in that last combat, because uh, you can chain it together. Like if an opponent dies from this, then you can use it again using one of the modes that it has. It's kind of a nice combination, I feel like. So you're always basically affecting, targeting down one opponent. Um, and then we also had the EMP generator. Where are you at? Where are you? Oh, at the very top. Um, the shield surge mode, uh, the recharge amount from this was actually increased as well because it wasn't getting uh wasn't getting a lot of use uh both from you guys out there we watch your streams we uh see what you're up to we see your screenshots and your builds and stuff like that and the information you share with us thank you for that by the way you help us uh balance this whole product out a little bit further to make meaningful decisions that's a good thing uh and so yeah shield surge received a buff on that front and uh it's that's been nice that's been nice so um, then I also have a number of other things that I just want to kind of talk about with you all because they're up and coming cool things. There's up and coming cool things. And, um, you know, we're here to have a conversation. So uh, a couple of these things you guys already know from our descriptions for the uh, summer update, right? You already know um, some of those things. For example, let me just pull up the frequently asked questions right now. You know that there's gonna be a new system, Drake, duh. You know there's gonna be new enemy factions. We've shown the concept art for the Phantom Retaliators, the Coalition, and the Zerilia. Uh, we have also talked about uh, new activities, mini missions, and challenges to appear. I've shown you various challenges. In fact, I can kind of show that again. Here we are. So like we have Outlaw Hunt 2, Advanced Combat. There's one missing from the screen. Uh, basically one of these is now gonna be, you have to destroy an enemy with three debuffs on it. Um, then, you know, we've got uh, Daredevil that's been added in here too. It's completing high risk areas in certain ways. Descriptions are still gonna be updated. You don't care about that, but regardless, that's all going on. This locked one is probably a Drake Explorer is my guess, but there's also more beyond just this. We're working hard on those. We wanna make some interesting options. And for anybody who's missed that front, just as a reminder, we want these challenges to serve as a slight boon if you go out and do them. You don't have to, you don't have to complete them, but if you do, you gain some inherent benefit for the rest of the game. So in Outlaw Hunt 1, it makes it to where uh, the you get a 10% discount on all equipment items at the Flying Duchess, for example, right? Just really, really simple bonus. Um, Outlaw Hunt 2, Outlaw Ravagers have a greatly increased chance to drop higher grade items. So that's Prototype and Starforged. So Ravagers are a little bit more rare of an enemy when you find them and you've got Outlaw Hunt 2 completed. Uh, they're going to be more opportunistic regarding items. Advanced Combat, first entering a location, gain 50% increased damage for 10 seconds, etc, etc, etc. So if you go out of your way to accomplish these tasks, some of which aren't terribly hard to do, but progressively get harder the more you unlock, uh, you're gonna get some sort of, you know, benefit. Cool. The explorers are mostly gonna just be, you know, you can travel through that area faster. 
That's kind of what we, we kind of like that design, so we're probably gonna stick to that. So, okay. Um, otherwise, we got a couple other little uh, things to talk about. Still, just a lot of, you know, features, a lot of like tweaks that we've noticed that needed to be revisited. Um, and also, I, I like this color scheme. I kind of want to choose that again. I'm just going to apply, oops, wrong one. There we go. Just look at my scout in the hangar while we're talking. Um, so you guys also know that from the frequently asked questions that there's going to be an increase in the level player, uh, the player level cap is going to be raised. Uh, crafting improvements and additions, we've been showing those off. It's been really nice. Higher scary mutators, we've been showing those off. There's going to be a new companion too, right? So you guys, uh, if you didn't know that, there's going to be another person that you meet who's going to need to find a space to live or something along those lines uh, that helps you out with his uh, or her uh, benefits or its. It. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, alien species, man. Let me tell you what. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, in addition to that, I keep saying in addition to, there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff here, but just kind of covering a couple other things. Little tweaks and adjustments like fixing how these challenges come together. Um, spatial bypass, we already talked about that like on the map, whenever you're looking at the spatial bypass uh, locations uh, for, here we go, fast travel. When you're all the way zoomed out, we wanted to fix that. So now you can actually see them. <coughs> Consumable rarities. I feel like that's pretty well understood at this point. Um, there's going to be sound effects for these newly added consumables too. So each one should have like a special sort of jingle or sound or tune uh, with maybe a, a visual effect to boot. So you have a strong understanding of what's just happened. And obviously these graphics will be updated as well. Uh, I'm really just kind of run through a list here because there's there's a bit of stuff and I just want you guys to be aware of this so you kind of can temper those expectations out there. Uh, we also have new sound effects, of course, for secondaries. That railgun, oh my gosh. I really I really do enjoy that railgun sound. Um, we also created shortcuts, uh, shortcut buttons to just get straight to certain menus. And I don't know which ones go to which ones, and there's certain menus that I can't show you, so I'm scared to push them. But basically, for keyboard users, you can assign those. Uh, shoot, maybe they're maybe they're in the in the uh, input options. Uh, customize control. Let's see if I can find them. Hopefully, yes, no, maybe. Ah, yeah. So here we go. So the space and menus. All of this has been getting updated. So crafting data, inventory, map, missions, perk ship push of a button you can assign those buttons for ease of navigation for all of your pc gaming needs from the con uh, the keyboard i think that's kind of been a popular request too like y'all just want unlimited key bindings and you know what I mean, i'm not going to deny that i don't want that uh uh so did i say that correctly whatever i i want that too I think that would be nice. So there you go. We're also jumping in on that front. Um, we've got a couple new indicators for devices uh, that are still getting plugged in, as well as uh, being able to craft the missing components for consumables as well, of course, uh, to track and craft those. Uh, and then, yeah, a couple, a couple other like optimization changes. So I kind of been going back and forth through the crafting tab a bit. And I don't know how many of you guys have experienced it in game, but when you pull up the crafting tab, sometimes it chugs. Sometimes it seriously chugs uh, in the current version that's live. Um, and we've updated that. We've updated that. So basically the, the caching system uh, has been adjusted to where, you know, as I'm going back and forth through these tabs, like, look at that. It's just, it's, it's there. It's, it's not having to wait around. So little, little things like that. But there's a lot more than that. Uh, because obviously you saw that trailer, you saw that trailer, you know that there's more stuff coming. There's, uh, you know, some type of freeze effect. There's new, new, new things. Oh my gosh. There's, there's more, there's more to find out about. Uh, and we will, we will in time. We will in time. 
So, uh, but those, those all, the big things I just listed, those are the big things that I think um, have either been from community requests that we just haven't uh, communicated yet to you fully, um, that just we feel are necessary improvements uh, to the game, you know, regarding the balance, the features. We are listening to a lot of what you have to say, and it's so pleasant to jump into the forums and like just experience what you guys are, you know, feeling in order to calm down there. Calm down there. Where are you going? Where are you at? Where's that turret? And just know that we are either going in the right direction for what you guys want, or uh, we're just like straight on the same sentence of the same paragraph of the same page. Um, so there's a lot of satisfaction there. Um, things are coming together really, really well. And it's a big thanks to you guys out there for a lot of your feedback, a lot of your support, your suggestions. Uh, keep it coming. Also do keep in mind, you know, I say that with a bit of a grain of salt because the game should be releasing in, you know, uh, close-ish to half a year at this point. Half a year. So if you have like this huge feature idea change to like the foundation of Everspace 2, I'm just straight up telling you, it ain't gonna happen. Like, be mindful of that. Uh, the big thing's gonna be kind of like your play testing, if, if you will. Okay, calm down there. Um, when you are playing the game and you experience things that just need a little bit of tweaks or balance or adjustments or stuff like that, and you think that you have an idea that could curb that, those are the types of things that we'd love to hear from you about. So again, keep it coming. You guys seriously are awesome. And uh, everybody at Rockfish Games thanks you for your dedication to the cause uh, to express these thoughts so we can truly make Everspace 2 the best it can possibly be. It's really awesome. Really awesome. Okay, enough about all this rambling. We've talked a lot. Now it's time to get back to the game. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's what we're going to do. So do we have another signal that we don't? I'm just gonna dismantle this and this. Put our stickies. We want our stickies. And we'll keep flying our scout around. I like this guy, he's fun. Oh, hello. Ow. Need more range. Oh, yay, Alec! What a buddy. Now, where was that auto-firing? Goodness. Good thing that I was around. See you, Adam. Take care, Alec! Thanks for your help! What a punk. There we go. This is a nice little scenic opportunity of explosions in front of the sun. No big deal. Neat. All right. Oh, wait. Goodies. Don't forget the goodies. to his backside. There we go. Ooh, a cloak field generator. That feels appropriate for the scout. And a coil gun. I think this sound got adjusted, didn't it? Yeah, I think you've heard that one, though. But just in case you have it, because I love letting you guys listen to all the little nuances and adjustments and tweaks and additions. There we go. Cool. Putting our railgun back on and getting our music back up. Excellent. Oh, wait, we need to go down here. 
we need to warp. There we go. So we can kind of go wherever we want, except not Drake. Come on, guys. <laughs> um, but man, those redeemers, they're seriously punks. Let's go to Zarkov for a little bit. That's always fun. Let's go to Zarkov. Is Everspace 2 staying on Game Pass after 1.0? Just wondering. Um, yes? Spatial bypass tech for the win. I am awaiting the next impending malfunction so I can finally say, I told you so. I'm trying to, to, to I'm legitimately trying to uh, recall a game that like through an early access period was on Game Pass and then at launch it was removed. And I, I'm not thinking of any. Um, if, the, if that's actually a thing, like if games get removed off of Game Pass, like at release, uh, just know that is not the plan for Everspace 2. <clears throat> Ancient's coming at me. You have the option to gain distance. I'm going to collect all this stuff over here because I like collecting things. And then we are going to uh, peruse some locations, I think. Oh, don't hit that. Better. Wonderful. All right. Uh, elites. We do want to take out some elites because we want to find uh, a signal decoder. Okar Prime. All right, we'll take it. This seems kind of dangerous. <laughs> All right, cool. See if he gives us the goods. Why am I doing that? I need to just snipe him. That corrosion's gonna do the job for me. Look at that. All right. Well, no more elites here, so we're gonna go look around a little bit more. Last try. Oh shoot! Am I missing a question? My apologies. Yeah, there was a lot that I was talking about. So anybody, if I if you asked a question and I missed it, uh, it's not because I don't love you. It's not because I'm ignoring you. It's actually because I was just talking about a lot of stuff. So if if you would like to softly ask the question again, that's totally fine. So uh, Tetsin asks. Uh, early access was delayed to give Cyberpunk 2077's arrival a wide berth. Might Bethesda's Starfield new release date, first half of 2023, I think, affect the 1.0 release date? We're not really concerned. Um, I mean, uh, like, Starfield, yeah, it looks great. It, don't get us wrong. Like, it's it's wonderful and fantastic, and sci-fi enthusiasts are going to love it. Uh, but it's a different game. These are, these are two different games. Um, and, you know, if people really want that more like um, No Man's Skyrim, you know, go for it. That's great. That's not an insult. I'm using that as a compliment, by the way. I think Bethesda does really good work on that front. More power to them. Awesome. But their game, our game, again, not the same. So, yeah, we're not worried about it. We're not worried about it. No, we've we've adjusted our deadlines in the past accordingly to our development cycle, and maybe a little bit for marketing purposes, but uh, I don't think that's gonna happen again. I don't think so. Why can't we go to Drake? Uh, because right now, they're just, uh, because, because I'd be spoiling everything. <laughs> Was that not clear? <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. I do like this side. I think it's pretty. But let's go to... Let's go to the uh, Outlaw Stronghold. 
Maybe we can find that little drone carrier. The little drone guy. Distress call. We could use some monies. Uh, Michael also responded to the question directly. I want to read this out loud. Um, sorry about the delay uh, of this, but I just want to read it. So Michael specifically says, we're pretty confident we'll hit the 1.0 release before any other major space game that is currently in development. So we're under fire. Just, uh, just a little bit more infos for you. Look at me getting all up close and personal in this combat. Ooh, a demolisher. These guys like to stay at range. And I am happy to oblige. Probably should get the other guys off of me first, though. Looks like we got more company. Okay. All right. Ouch. Pain. Uh, where's that, uh, where's that bomber? Destroyer? Destroyer? Well, there, ah, Demolisher. Words are important. Demolisher, Demolish. We ran out of juice. Oh, you know something else that we fixed? I should have highlighted it there. Shoot. Um, so something else that we actually fixed. I think it was Marco who uh, figured out a way to make it to where whenever you're cloaked in the scout or, you know, uh, in any ship now, <clears throat> whenever you are cloaked and you fire, what it does is it gives away your position, but the opponents do not lock onto you. So enemies will start firing at the point of which you fired from, but their shots won't be locked. So if you stay in the same area as you're shooting from cloak, you'll get hit. But if you shoot and then you keep moving around and you're still cloaked, you can actually shoot again, uh, like without being like targeted throughout that process. So just a cool little, little adjustment that he made on that front, which I think is nice. I'm registering no more attackers. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Let's go see if we can find anything in this uh, junk heap over here. 2023 is looking to be an interesting year for space games. Yes. I know one in particular that I'm excited about. <laughs> ah! All right. Um, let's answer a couple more questions since I don't want you guys to think that I uh, am avoiding them because I'm not. <clears throat> So we have, will with consumables being craftable now, can you dismantle them for resources? No, that is not something we wanted to do. No, we want craftables to basically um, be crafted if you need them, but otherwise you destroy them if you take them apart. If we wanted to get into some sort of techie lore bit thing, maybe it's like, you know, you put it together and then like taking it apart, it's just, it's too, it's too temperamental. It's, it's whatever. Uh, and it just busts upon that. Uh, it's gamification through and through. So you shouldn't be going willy nilly with crafting and then, you know, all that type of stuff. But, you know, it adds a level of preparedness. And remember, when you're doing uh, consumables, they usually require components as well. And because of that component requirement, uh, you know, some of these components are a little bit more hotly contested to find. Uh, you know, like through the course of the stream, shoot. I, how many times did I uh, create the freaking memory recalibrators? I think I've made eight of them and we're low on plasma now. So you'll want to be mindful of like what you're crafting and why. Um, and yeah, on that front specifically, when it comes to um, consumables, you cannot scrap them. So great question, great question. And this is working as intended. We don't want them to be uh, dismantled. Uh, let's see what else. Mouse and keyboard has no aim assist at all, right? I play Everspace 2 with Xbox controller. Uh, I believe that is correct. I'd have to double check with Andy, but the last time I spoke with him, I believe the mouse does not have any aim assist whatsoever. Uh, granted, I could swap over to controller like right the heck now, just like that. 
um, and suddenly get aim assist. Maybe I should have did that in my scout. Well, <clears throat> regardless. Yes, that's how that works. Uh, weapon sounds, are these for higher levels only? Uh, I like that question a lot. Uh, in short, weapon sounds like weapon colors can be completely random. Um, so there could be some territory that you could just find weapons that you think sounds cool and it's not necessarily associated with its tier or not. We are looking into how that operates a little bit further um, because I think internally we're also thinking that there could be maybe like unique sounds for lower tiers that are just randomized and then unique sounds for higher tiers that are, you know, randomized. But, but uh, like I said, uh, that may or may not uh, reach true fruition. It's not a priority for our uh, sounds to get that level of, of polish and detail at this time. You can just see, you know, from the, the demonstration of, of, you know, going in and showing you these weapons that we want there to be more weapon sounds, right? Especially since, you know, there's a pretty strong pool of weapons. There's a pretty strong pool of weapons. And so weapon sounds are gonna be important to, you know, uh, and all the variants of these as well, and possibly more coming, I don't know. Uh, we want there to be a lot. And we want that to shape and change your style even. You want a, a sound of a weapon that like, is cool to you, you know, maybe there's gonna be some aspect of that that uh, is in the randomization pool. And maybe even something that could be uh, uh, adjusted uh, or, or modified to your liking in the future. I don't know. <clears throat> Just an idea. Can't, can't guarantee anything uh, on that front. I wanna be clear on that. I'm teasing a little bit, but I, I sincerely can't guarantee anything on that front. So, um, let's see. A couple more questions and then we will play that sweet trailer again, yeah? Yeah? Okay, so let's answer a couple more questions. Uh, will you be able to record Everspace 2 gameplay? Because you can't do that on Everspace 1. I'm confused by the question. I have definitely recorded and posted Everspace 1 gameplay a lot on my YouTube channel before I was officially working for Rockfish Games. So I'm I'm curious what's going on uh, with that. If you have a technical issue, uh, Yilia, uh, I would strongly suggest you head on over to the forums and post what's going on. Maybe somebody can help you out in the uh, community. That sounds very interesting. Or maybe I'm not understanding it because Michael just responded and said, that's a feature being high on our list, but it's tricky while also not the most important on uh, one gameplay wise. So changes are low. Okay, so uh, I digress. I digress. Uh, anyway, so flying laser pods as secondaries. Look, look, I am, uh, okay. <laughs> if you guys have ideas for like what you want to see as weaponry and stuff, that, that kind of, that's kind of passed at this point. Uh, just letting you know, like we have uh, a number of ideas that we are going to bring to fruition, some of which may uh, feel familiar. <clears throat> and uh, you know, there's there's just, it's, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be nice uh, to get to that point in the future. We just have to get there. And uh, I think you'll, I think you'll like what we're cooking up. Um, okay, I like this statement regarding uh, larger ships in the railgun. Uh, so the railgun and its auto aim uh, has a weird aim assist where it hits nearby ships instead of larger targets, uh, even though you're aiming um, on the gamepad. Yeah, so this is something that we've actually been talking about internally as well to try and adjust the uh, aim assist, like how it like clicks over, if you will. Um, so that you have a good experience on the gamepad um, and the game's being intuitive and in how it's approaching what you're trying to shoot at. So more adjustments on that front in the future. That is something that we are still sort of addressing. It's something we're still addressing. Why can you not upgrade weapons you craft yourself? Uh, simply put, because if you could 
upgrade weapons that you craft yourself, then that would make crafting at unique rarities really weird. If you want a superior, craft a superior. If you want a superior and you craft a common that didn't upgrade it one, two, three times to like get around the fact that you don't have a blueprint, eh, that's getting around the fact that you don't have the blueprint. We don't like that. So if you want to craft at that tier, you need to find the blueprint to be able to craft at that tier. That's that's the that's the short. Uh, let's see. Any more? Did I miss any any other questions? Desired commodities, resources, etc. Easier retro nutcase ass like dedicated mining areas. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's there's been a lot on that front. Um, I think it's actually. Uh, yeah, it's like right here. You know, you go to your mining map. You can say I'm looking for iron. You pop this open and it tells you like there's medium accounts of iron in these locations or there's high amounts in the gmb mining fields and nefty's plane so we'd probably want to go back over there for that uh yeah lots of stuff like that to enable crafting even more so if you're looking for specific things to craft like say i don't know um whatever i need something that i don't have oh here we go so we can track the missing resources right with the plasma is now highlighted yellow so we know that when we find plasma uh, we can pick it up more readily available since it'll be highlighted in yellow. Um, little features like that. There, there's a lot. There's a lot that's been done on this front. We've talked about it a bit already. But yeah, lots lots of stuff. Dedicated mining areas, I think, is a good way of describing it. Um, and maybe like one more question, and then we're going to watch that trailer again! The gravity effect's going to be like on these new planets since gravity seems mostly like space low gravity on current planets. Um, so I do wanna, I wanna temper expectations on this front. So I think that I, I've seen a number of thoughts, ideas, suggestions surrounding how like when you are in space versus you're on a planet that the gravity should affect you differently, right? In a realistic world, you're absolutely right. It should, it absolutely should. But there are also degrees of gamification that we apply to the game space that the player doesn't have to challenge themselves with unique styles of uh, experiences that we don't simply desire. So I'm not saying that we are doing it right. I'm also not saying we're doing it wrong. I'm saying we're doing it the way that we're doing it because it's the way we want to do it. And as such, when you are in space versus when you are on a planet, uh, gravity does not impose itself upon the player it will impact certain items uh like physical items that can fall uh but i don't think that's even something we want to make different between planets because that's another level of uh memorization that you would have to do as a player that it, it gets weird it's, it's just a lot of stuff that we don't necessarily feel is necessary so yeah uh and then we'll like just to cut like oh my gosh i see more questions but i'm gonna get back to this trailer oh goodness here let me find a let me find a stopping point to um rest our weary head there we go gas field any info yet on being able to retrieve items from home base storage while in another system not yet not yet not yet where can I read more about the game, end game, ideas, ship development, only played Everspace 1 a bit? You can find a lot of information over on the Discord, actually. Uh, we talk about that a lot. There's also a Kickstarter page for Everspace 2. It was Kickstarted, and it has a lot of updates through that. But I think the best spot, straight up, is going to be the Steam page. If you go to the Steam page, you follow it, or wishlist it, you're going to be able to see immediately like any updates and features and improvements and highlights and all that type of stuff. We also have a YouTube channel where we've covered a lot of things as well. Uh, my goodness. And then of course these Friday streams, I'm just constantly cracking into new things and highlighting stuff and answering questions. Uh, you could probably tell. So uh, yeah. So this is the part where uh, we go back to the trailer because it's super cool, right? So let's do that. Um, oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, and nice, nice little imagery here. We see that Drake Gang Wars arriving soon. Arriving soon, early access update number five. And as many of our veteran pilots know, when we say <clears throat> update, we're not talking some minor little adjustment. There's a lot of stuff we've been talking about across uh, the last couple months 
Uh, it's all going to be in here. It's going to be, it's going to make a pretty big impact, we feel like. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that. All right, let's play this again. Here we go. Oh my gosh, guys, it hypes me up. It hypes me up. Oh, there's so much juicy content in that. Oh, goodness. So, hey, um, just because we just talked about it, I also want to make sure that you guys do know, look at all these places that you can go for more information. I really would recommend, though, that the best way to get the details regarding Everspace 2 are going to be through um, these live streams every Friday where I literally talk to you guys about upcoming updates and features and highlight little teases like this sweet freaking trailer. And then also, you know, the Steam store page in particular, uh, you go over there, you wish list us. That's gonna put you directly into the feed of Everspace 2. So anytime there's updates, uh, you're gonna, we're gonna drop the news bucket over on that front. You're gonna be able to see anything and everything related to development. And there's a lot of stuff that we have covered. So uh, those are gonna be the two big things. So being here, present in the streams, asking questions and just being a general baller, like that's that's honestly how to do it. So very, very good stuff. Uh, also just random throwback. You guys remember those vlogs like 50 years ago? Actually, it's 75 years ago. Uh, amazing, super impressive. Uh, yeah, seriously, you should check those out just to see how far we've come and see what's been realized. Oh my gosh, it's a lot of fun. Those vlogs can be found on YouTube. Uh, and we are not making more vlogs before anyone, I dang it, Grindel already asked, but we're not making more vlogs. Um, but yeah, you can check those out uh, and just see just really how far things have progressed. Seriously cool, uh, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, guys, that's honestly like the end of the stream. Uh, I know that we're, we're done a little bit short today. Um, that's not that's not a worry whatsoever. We could just like chill with the jellies and hang out. Um, I'm totally down for doing that. We can answer some more questions that you have since I know that you have a lot of them. I mean, there's there's a lot of information that we shared today, you know, some of which has been kind of, you know, just quality of life features, improvements, general things that you kind of knew were coming. We've highlighted more things that are on the way. And then of course, we were able to drop that trailer for the first time and uh, I'm sure you got questions. So yeah, go ahead and ask some questions. Just keep in mind that if your question's about the specifics of what was that thing we saw in the trailer, I'm not answering that. I can't. I can't. <laughs> The trailer's supposed to tease you. Oh, it's tantalizing, isn't it? Oh my goodness. What did I miss, says Animated Viking, who just enters the stream. Oh my gosh. Guys, do we tell him? Do we? No, I've just been eating food for the last hour and 55 minutes. Uh, that's that's it. That's what you... <laughs> oh man, I think you're going to love replaying this one, though. There's a, there's a lot of fun. We're probably going to... We're probably going to play the trailer one more time, because why not? We'll do it like right at the end. But uh, okay, what do you guys got? What do you, what do you guys got? Uh, Spoot Knight says, between the coil gun, prime zapper and equalizer, what's your favorite of the three from your testing? Oh gosh, what a question. You know, um, it's through testing alone that makes me appreciate weapons that have greater energy reserves for some reason. Um, just being able to fire it more frequently is just incredibly satisfying. There is still something to be said uh, about like the equalizer and the uh, synchro pulse. So I was even using the synchro pulse today, right? Where it has a very large energy draw, but it does a lot of damage uh, to compensate for that. So it's it really is hard to tell though. It really is hard to tell. Um, and it depends on kind of like what I'm feeling in the moment too, because it changes depending on what ship you're using, what equipment you have. Uh, it, it sincerely looks different. Sincerely looks different. So nice haircut, my dude, rocking the shortcut on the side. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. 
Absolutely. I did, in fact, get a haircut this week. I appreciate you noticing. Delightful. Uh, let's see. Wondering if it will actually be end of June for beta. Oh, man. That's, that, would be, that would be seriously cool. It's the 17th. Uh, let's see, when are we releasing it? Uh, 2025. Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna, it's, it might, it's possible. It's, uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, based on our, our schedule of events, um, I mean, I feel like that's not a terrible guess. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys are super eager to, to get it into your hands. Uh, you know, with that coming soon, that's a pretty good note. Uh, pretty good, should pr provide a pretty good gauge for you guys. Uh, to just know that like it like we don't say coming soon when it's going to be six months out i mean let me just be real on that front so yeah uh let's see any new weapons with the drake system if not when are new weapons coming um it's a little too telling uh of a response to you yelia but do know that with each update we do like to include a slew of new content, and we also like to provide content that isn't talked about in the live streams so that it ends up being a surprise or, you know, what have you. Um, that's, that's, all, that's incredibly telling what I just said there. But the point is, is that new stuff can show up uh, and new weapons are absolutely something that we are still working on. Uh, they're just, you know, time, energy, you know, just takes it. Uh, let's see. I missed a question. Any way to get STL files for the Everspace ships? Uh, Michael did respond to this one, so I'm going to read it off directly. I've only seen this question like one other time, by the way, which impressively surprises me. I would want my hands on those bad boys and like print them out. But uh, this is what Michael says. He says, it's tricky because player ships are based on modules. We might look into this if we have the time, but no promises. And let me just confirm Michael on that front. Uh, we have had internal talks uh, about that, uh, about like having STL files, uh, but it does look different if we were going that direction. And when I say look different, I mean, it's going to take us time to move in a different direction in order to create that. At the end of the day, we're a video game company creating a video game. That's our focus. That's our focus. When we're looking at like a, a physical, you know, 3D model of a ship, badass, don't get me wrong, but it's actually out of the scope of what our initial job is or what our initial uh, vision is, if you wanna go in that direction. So uh, as Michael said, I just wanna you know, really double down on this. Is this thing possible? Yes. Is it something that we are going to do? No promises. No promises. We, just, we, can't, we can't make that promise, all right? So, Hopefully that adjusts expectations accordingly. And I hope you guys understand that as well. Enemy abilities, behaviors, or difficulty levels adjusted anywhere based on your current ship's tier. Not your current ship's tier. No, they are not. That is not something we have be a modifier. No. Uh, Allergies seem to be under control. Yes, I punched them uh, in the face. All of my allergies, every single one of them, they are gone. Beatboxing, please. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's been a while. Oh, I wasn't expecting this request. You guys are nuts. Oh, you guys are absolutely nuts. <clears throat> but I love you all dearly. Oh my goodness. Uh, what else? What, what else do we have? Any other questions? Make an MMO sandbox. Uh, is that what the question was? Please make this game a massively multiplayer online sandbox and will be the greatest game ever. Uh, yeah, so as Michael responded, if you have a few hundred million dollars you wanna throw at us, we would be more than happy uh, to probably just create a, a completely different game to do that. We would also release Everspace 2 separately. Uh, but yeah, no, just a couple million, no big deal. Uh, Wait, did I say a couple? I meant hundred, a couple hundred million. That would be fine. We'd get on that. Uh, awesome. <laughs> Send a tweet to Elon. Oh my God. You guys, you're ridiculous. We love your dad boxing. Finally, somebody gets it right. Oh my gosh. Guys, we are actually, we're after the stream. The stream has actually ended. 
this is just me playing around with you at this point. Um, but sincerely, you all, uh, I do need to do my little catchphrase, don't I? You guys have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for all things Everspace 2. Don't stop being awesome. And I won't stop being Eric Schrader. Oh my gosh. But sincerely, um, uh, toodles. Okay, and now I can, now we can, you know, keep talking, right? There's no transition, don't worry about that. It's not awkward. It's only awkward if you think it is. Oh my goodness. But sincerely, thank you all for showing up for the stream uh, and hanging out, having a good time. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun today to present these with you. Uh, next week, uh, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more of that style of diving in, having these discussions with you, highlighting new things coming up and Drake is coming soon. You saw it in the trailer. Oh, what? What trailer are you talking about? Oh my gosh! Let's do it one more time! All right, I'm just gonna leave it at the screen, guys, because this is where we are gonna part our ways. We're gonna head on over and give Corbin some love in his stream. Tell him all about this trailer that he missed. Make fun of him for it. Uh, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be great. Otherwise, guys, you have sincerely been awesome. You have been so freaking cool today. So uh, have a great weekend.